Oh my God, it's the tapestry of life. It's what makes life so rich and meaningful. And it's also what fucks you up. What's an emotion? And people say, it's, it's energy in motion. I'm like, okay, congratulations. You've read a fucking, you've read a personal development book. An emotion is a neurological response, okay, to neurological stimulus. And so you see things, hear things, feel things, smell things, taste things in your environment. And those signals go through your brain. They go through a chain of neurons that have already been programmed as a reference for that stimulus. And then it reaches a part of your brain called the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is like the pharmaceutical plant of your brain. And it pumps out a combination of neural peptides. And each combination of neural peptides relates to a specific frequency of emotion, a specific intensity of an emotion. And so those neural peptides get pumped out. They go down through the pituitary gland, into the bloodstream, they and then connect with every single cell in your body. Okay, skin cells, hair cells, tissue cells, bone cells, blood cells, and they connect with those cells and they lock in. They go, and when those peptides connect with the cell, the cell literally starts to behave differently. It either starts to vibrate at a high rate of frequency or it starts to vibrate at a low rate of frequency. Okay? What we call vibratio. Okay, vibration, vibratio, either a higher vibratio or lower vibratio. Now, the vibratio is determined by the emotion. And so when we look at emotions, we can classify emotions into two contexts, high positive, low negative. Because what we need to understand is emotions are on a spectrum. And so when you are feeling an emotion, this is where it gets a little funky. I'll do it over here. This is your cell. And so when you experience an emotion, let's say the happiness peptide looks like a triangle. Okay, and the sadness neuropeptide looks like a square. So every cell will have keyholes for each emotion. And so what happens is when you experience an emotion, the peptide comes in here and locks in. And now this cell starts to vibrate at a different rate of frequency. And this is what we experience as being intoxicated because see how this is the peptide for happiness. Guess what else this is the peptide for? Alcohol. Anything that in most cases is dopamine producing. And so what emotions do, or what I should say, what drugs, alcohol, and barbiturates do is they mimic emotional peptides and actually get you drunk. Now, Kerwin, you're full of shit. All right, battle test it. Has anyone ever been really excited before? So excited that you did or said something that when you calmed down, you went, ooh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Has anyone ever done that before? Has anyone here ever been so sad or so angry that you did or said something that when you sobered up, you went, ooh, I probably shouldn't have done that. And so what we know, emotions have the power to intoxicate us, but most of us are completely oblivious. Guess what drugs and alcohol and barbiturates are? They're addictive. But hang on, Kerwin. They work on the same chemical pathways as emotions. So are you telling me emotions are addictive? Yes, I absolutely fucking am. Emotions are addictive and they intoxicate. And there are many people right now that are in complete denial or complete unconscious addictive patterns with their emotions. Why? Because unless they're angry, they're not happy. <laughs> I know that sounds strange, right? These peptides, guess what these peptides are like for a cell? They're like food. And so when your cells get hungry, they crave chemical food. And what your cells do is they en masse, because you've got like a fucking trillion of them, We'll go, let's put him into a situation where he's got to get angry so that we can get fed. And so your cells will collaborate with your environment and your psychology in order to get a fix, just like an addict would. We're bombarding the cell with sadness. What does the cell do? It now splits and divides. But what the cell will now do is the cell will now evolve to adapt to its environment. And so before I had, you know, I had three peptide uh, openings for happiness, well now I've only got two. And before I had three openings for anger or sadness, and now I've got four. Because the cell has adapted to the environment. And it can get to the point, if you're constantly bombarding your body with the same emotion, and this is where we start looking at the long-term impacts of something like depression or anxiety, you literally get to the point where you have so few receptors for happiness, your body doesn't remember in some cases how to feel happy.
most people drink responsibly, but very few people experience emotion responsibly. Because when most people experience an emotion, they're in the emotion. I'm just happy. Are you aware that you're happy? No, I'm just happy. Oh, I'm fucking angry. Are you aware that you're angry? I'm fucking angry. And it's like, well, it's one thing to be angry, but it's another thing to step back and go, holy shit, I'm really angry right now. Whew, what's that all about? Where's that coming from? Versus being in it. Because when you're in it, you know, someone comes up and he goes, mate, you're drunk. You need to go home. I'm not fucking drunk. You're drunk. Oh, fuck off. But what we've got to understand is the implications of using emotions unconsciously over an extended period of time have a biological impact that affect the way that you show up. I know for me personally, for a long period of time, I was addicted to adrenaline, very addicted to adrenaline. And I was very addicted to um, the excitement of adrenaline. And most mornings, you know, I'd jump up and down and I'd do my move until I felt my adrenaline, okay, and my cortisol pumping. And then I'm like, ah, oh, now I've got a fix. Now I can keep moving. Collapsed five times, hospitalized twice. That routine almost killed me. And it wasn't until I became aware of what was happening biologically that I had an intervention with myself. I was like, whoa, this is not sustainable. 